hello youtubers and hello to the it community out there um it's been pretty rough for everybody having to deal with luck for j monster and um also planning for christmas hasn't been really easy for nobody i understand um well i want to drop one more video and maybe two more before the year runs out or probably three who knows <laughs> okay so today we'll be um looking at netcats and using netcats to do some cool stuff quickly jumping into this the first task we'll be covering is these next cards to do tcp udp port scan and um, let's see how that works um on my screen we can see i've got an ip address which we're going to connect later with ssh is a mac actually is a um it's a mac os stuff so let's try and do some verification let's ping 192.168.0.101 can we reach it okay great so we can see that they have not disabled icmp and that's why we can reach it but if i disable it on the mac you won't be able to ping that system actually but just to showcase i actually enabled it to showcase something we can see the ttl is 64 once again if you've been following us uh, on youtube you'd have heard us mentioning how you can do some passive enumeration knowing what sits behind this ip uh, for my TTL value, I can tell this is a Linux flavor of a kind of system 64 um, Specifically, I can drill down to know if it's a Mac or other flavors of Linux, but we won't be covering that today So the we have verified that the host is up. So let's start with a um, basic TCP scan using netcat uh, if you don't know netcat nctac h gives you this lovely options um, you can see a lot happening here. I'm going to leave you to read this up on your own, but you should really look at it um, you, Or you can use the man command to verify um, All the switches and all the options. So let's quickly jump into this and see uh, we're going to use an option tag V maybe Tag N and also tag Z. I could combine all of them together. It doesn't really matter anyways um, Just showcasing from a start. So 192.168.0.101 that's our targets then let's say we do a scan from port 21 uh, or maybe port 20 to ports probably uh, 500 I might stop it at some point but we can see that <laughs> was pretty fast up to a point connection refuse connection refuse well once again like I told you it's a MacBook and a lot is pretty locked down on this box so <laughs> I expect to see this uh, um, but I just want to show you something look at port 22 so we can see port 22 verified that connection and we can see it succeeded so telling us that there is a um, this port TCP is open now this is something most times you find us in with nmap uh, uh, but um, just to showcase that you can use netcats as a basic tool of because most Linux server has got this installed by default so you can just use this to do enumeration which is the essence of me recording this video so we can see 22 is open we're going to use the same thing and maybe do for UDP and now we're going to pass that flag U to um, do for UDP so already we can see within that port range at scan 20 to 500 only 22 is open <laughs> okay that's the mag we're going to gonna repeat and I've done some good security blocking there i only allowed icmp because i wanted to showcase something so let's go after udp so this time around we're going to do um vzu let's do vzu i'm just going to combine this just so i can showcase that uh z and u so like i told you you can combine this as well so if we scan this range for UDP ports, well, this is UDP scan, so we expect that it might delay a bit if it's not probably something that has been completely blocked. But um, uh, let's see if I'm allowed to scan UDP on that MacBook. All right, so we can see nothing pretty much is being returned at us. I'm going to cancel this. Maybe just scan specific. Uh, let me see if I do 53, if that's actually open. So you see nothing returned. Uh, um, it's open but once again it's blocked but just to show you that you can use netcats to do TCP scan or UDP scan okay that's the first part of this recording now we're going to go into the second part of the recording okay so for the second part of this uh, for my chili chatter lovers friend or lover friends um, uh, just to showcase that we can use netcats to also 
have like internal communication. I'm connecting to the MacBook. I'm gonna accept that fingerprint, then put in the password. an extremely long password <laughs> so I may miss it a few times please bear with me if I'm not able to get it the first time okay I got it the first time all right you can see um, that's um, the MacBook uh, which we've connected to ID we can see basically we've got that ACA stuff going there the GI group IDs stuff and um, a few other stuff that have been configured a work laptop pretty much uh, I just thought I could play with it show you guys some stuff okay good all right so I'm gonna clear the screen now um, let's try to have a chart communication let's assume this is our organization within the organization and we want to chat with this user over here and we're over here on our Ubuntu server so we could probably maybe depending on who want to initiate the conversation we could set up a listener then also open up turn out a port uh, I must warn this is not an encrypted connection so it's not a safe one so let's see how that works but it happens if you're sitting behind a firewall or internal network I uh, NC tag LVP uh, let's say we use 2233 to start that um, sorry. Numbers. Okay, I'm gonna pass that. And the. <laughs> All right. I know. Thank you. Okay, great. So over here, we're going to set the connection to connect back to that. So we're gonna use on the Mac and see. Remember, this is a MacBook. So um, I need to verify the IP address of this. IP add. Um, maybe grab for one nine two. All right, that's the IP address. So 192.168.0.104. So we're connecting back to that. Then we're going to go to that port, which we had chosen to be, uh, sorry, 2233. Okay, great. So you can see connection received. I can start chatting. Hey, man. <laughs> and you can reply here. Uh, just showcasing stuff anyways it's something we do within <laughs> organizations we play around sometimes you don't want to go via the regular whatsapp or whatever but please do know like i told you this ain't encrypted so anybody who is in this network with um, maybe wireshark maybe i could showcase that later you will actually sniff all these conversations in clear text and you can actually read them up so or you can try that up on your own all right so that's it for the second part of this challenge we're going to switch to the third part of it okay so everybody loves banner grabbing who, who, who will who will tell me that they don't love banner grabbing so i'm going to just stop this thing uh because i'm done chili chatting uh let's do some banner grabbing i'm going to also kill um okay already dead so i'm going to do some banner grabbing let's see how we can use netcat now i could do on my macbook as well maybe maybe i could try that here and see if that's going to work so i'm going to try to grab banner on this server if i do uh ss stack t u l p uh sorry oh great oh great 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 it's not in oh my bad <laughs> okay great i just want to see maybe go after a port okay great uh 1940 uh this is my hacker box i might be careful not to showcase some stuff all right so let's just grab some banner 192.168.0.104 let's see we go after 8080 let's see if that port is open okay it doesn't seem to be open how about 80 uh can we grab banner with it okay i'm trying to grab banner on this server um i can see there's 9040 um uh, this is delaying a bit i'm just gonna kill this let me try 9040 okay that didn't return nothing okay so let's switch place let's go over here and do uh nc 192.168.0.101 let's go after 22 since we know 22 is open so pretty much you can see it show that back at us open ssh uh well i'm, I'm on an updated version so <laughs> great i guess i'm safe okay good so we can see pretty much a true banner us straight up that's what you can do in netcat i'm going to try some other ports which had been verified initially were 
closed obviously nothing returned because it's actually closed okay um nothing is listening not that it's not it's open trust me i can tell you that but it's behind um uh ip tables and i'm um, also managing connections that can go in i'm not sure why i cannot grab that banner can i try that locally oh 127 okay let's see i'm sure i have something on 8080 oh really okay okay that's some delay, delay there but anyways i just wanted to show you we can see how netcats can actually grab a banner i probably would have set up a server somewhere and track me so i can pretty much grab as much banners i would love to show you guys stuff but anyways you can use this to even pass a port range if you want to do the same thing just to show you i can cancel this and uh run that command again and maybe do from 80 to 100 uh so it's going to attempt and grab as much as banner so but there's nothing there if i try maybe from 20 to 22 we can see only 22 returns the banner 20 there's nothing in 20 nothing in 21 okay just to show you you can do a range of ports as well when you're doing that banner grabbing okay so we'll switch over to the next part of this recording okay so let, let's try to send them um, probably a payload to <laughs> our macbook and see if that's going to work out for us so we're going to use netcats to maybe ship a payload over so right here in my payloads directory i've got some funny stuff that was using to do some cool stuff and track me so let's pretty much use netcats to um send a payload so i'm going to pass that nlvp no name resolution actually uh, then i'm going to maybe use a port 4545 then i'm going to probably use this symbol to send the file let me send payload.txt because uh, i'm not sure if that's going to be maybe blocked by something pretty much okay so i've opened up that port that uh, connection over here to receive it i'm going to use nc pass my ip address 192.168 sorry um dot zero dot one zero four then what we're going to do is we're going to use this to receive the file the name of the file is payloads or payload dot txt so it has to be the same name matching the name over there so uh no ports oh sorry i didn't specify that ports uh so it's um uh, what's the port four five four five so we want to receive that file let's see if that's going to work okay we can see connection received and probably if the macbook won't cut that thing off uh, it's going to try to download that file so let's wait and see if that's going to work if it doesn't work uh then obviously the macbook actually truncated or stopped that connection okay great i may have to go allow or enable that on the macbook security <laughs> all right cool uh, this is not me trying to say mac is super safe but um if you've done some good configuration and it's it's pretty much a bit safer than everything that happens around the windows environment all right good so that would be it for this just to show you that you can actually use netcat to transfer stuff so we can see the uh part file size that has been received is showing us that stuff i'm not going to wait for this to finish uh we'll move on to the next part of the challenge oh, okay so the next part um i guess um should be the sweet part most of you will be waiting for reverse shell reverse shell all the way <laughs> so let's see how we can use netcats but just to verify we see that payload thing actually came in the macbook i can cut the content just to show you that stuff is actually a funny payload stuff but anyways that's not why we're here i'm going to clear that screen so let's do reverse shell uh, which is what most of you probably have been waiting for so over here i'm going to clear the screen i will use meta msf con uh, msf venom probably to create a payload that will be using netcats to actually serve so let's do msf venom okay it's right here uh we'll set a payload maybe cmd um unix that should be fine then reverse um uh, netcats okay so we're using netcats in this case um l host 
Um, you might be wondering, I'm not using capital letter. A doesn't really matter, actually. So ourselves would be 192.168.0.104. Then we'll set the L ports. And we'll pass the value for the L ports to be, uh, let's just use 5656. Great. Then we'll pass that R flag. Okay, so it should throw out the results on our screen for us. Uh, we're not saving it as a file. Okay, so we're going to wait for that to generate. Then over here, uh, still on my attacker box, I'm just going to set up a Netcat NC DAC NLVP. Then 5656. Okay, let's set up a listener there. Let's grab this payload. We're going to take the payload over to the targets and see if we can actually execute that payload. So I'm going to copy this. Uh, it's just like a one-liner stuff. Okay, I'll take that over here. Then I had specified CMD Unix. If I was going after Windows, I'm sure you know what that would have been. So let's paste that over here and let's see. And obviously, <laughs> we've got the reverse connection, so we can maybe do an ID. We can see this is the MacBook. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure Python is installed, so we can do a regular Python. Uh, let's just verify. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay, great. So we can do a Python 3 tag C and import. Uh, a regular PTY then use that to Spain a basher a basher um, I will go for maybe being bash okay that should be pretty cool let's see if we can spin a basher obviously we've got an interactive shell so um, we see it as Z shell actually because like I told you um, the default interactive shell on the MacBook that I had set up is a C shell. So obviously we can use the full functionality uh, export maybe term. Um, let's see if that's going to work for us. Okay, great. So we can use the full functionality of it. Anyways, that will be it for this. Uh, we'll see if we can take one more before we wrap this up. Thanks. Uh, just hang around for the next one. Okay, so what if things get a pretty nasty and too difficult for us and we're not able to maybe spin this uh, stuff which we got here. So I'm just going to exit this. Uh, it became too difficult and we probably can't get this working for us. Um, there are other ways we can bypass uh, a little bit of security fences, which we're going to try now. So we're going to set up... Um, uh, let's use a default pop or tree. If you can use pop or tree, I'm not sure. It's pretty much busy on the server. Uh, I'm just going to try that 192.1. Um, uh, I think I'm just going to go, sorry, NLVP. Let me see if I can listen. Our address already in use. I'm going to try other random ports. So I'm going to try 446. Okay, great. Over here, uh, let's see if we can maybe. If we have initial access and want to get another probably persistence or kind of like uh, maintaining that level of persistence, we can over here on the remote server, we can execute a few command MK um, node. Um, then we'll use the temp in this case just so we can um, hide stuff. So create a pipe, back pipe. If that works, um, BOC, oh, 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 great. Uh, no type must be B or C or it is a MacBook. Okay, great. So let me try. Um, let me try the B and C. Mm, okay, that's that's not nice. Okay, this might not work here on the MacBook. Uh, try the C. All right, okay. I might not be able to use this here. I'll probably get it working to showcase what I wanted to showcase. Okay, but but um, that could pretty much work here. Um, uh, just to show. Um, so we're going to. 
so that works here obviously i i was actually using that to open up kind of like a connection then i can now do uh being maybe an sh then uh, zero pass that over to the temp uh tmp back pipe uh, which we just created then pipe that over to uh, start net cards on that IP address going back to the connection so 192.168.0.104 just to showcase stuff 446 then we can now throw out that over to temp then pass that over to the back pipe okay this should give us a reverse connection we see that uh, I get a I get a reverse connection. Uh, receive the connection over here. More like I'm creating tunnels, but uh, I couldn't showcase that from the remote. Uh, you can actually try this on a remote server. It's gonna work, but um, the MacBook is pretty much locked, and I didn't allow for this to be able to happen. But just to show you that works, you can see we got that reverse connection over here. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you for once again hanging around. I uh, will be showcasing some more techniques or cheats uh, um, after initial access, which is the whole excellence privilege escalation or uh, lateral movement or persistence, or all the stuff. And also, just a quick reminder we'll be recording the AWS um, pen testing from the first week of January. So please do like, subscribe our content. And um, thanks. See you next time. Bye bye.